another week, boys, and another twab. This week in Destiny, happy Tuesday, Guardians. We are back this week and ready to you know what. Some of us might not have finished this week's story yet, so we'll save that for another day. We hope you are enjoying it, and honestly, I'm looking forward to the art y'all will inevitably come up with. Okay, before we get too distracted, let's dive right into the news. Topics covered last week, new rewards to earn, a preview of next week's weapon update, Gunsmith Focus Ruin Ingram. Topics for this week, Exotic Focusing Updates, Deck of Whispers article highlight, Mid-Season Armor and Weapons preview, and more seasons added to the Cutscene Archive. Raul hosts The Price is Right. Hi ho, economy team here. One of the biggest challenges for our economy team is making sure that the in-game currency required for our most exciting in-game gear is fair and achievable for players of all skill levels and play styles. If the required currency is too high, only players who play the hardest content every week feel like they can afford something and it stops feeling aspirational for new and more casual players. On the other hand, the price is too low. Highly engaged folks will essentially have infinite access to the currency in question and it makes getting high-end gear like exotics feel like no big deal. When we made exotic focusing, we spent a lot of time asking ourselves what feels fair to players of all types. We then modeled the prices after the cost of buying new exotics from the Monument of Lost Light. It was a high price point, but by including a cheaper and more randomized option, we felt sure that if nothing else, we wouldn't accidentally flood the game with exotics until they felt like the items were extremely common. Since then, we have had lots of opportunities to both listen to the community feedback about exotic focusing and collect detailed data about how many players, how much players with different time commitments tend to earn and own week to week. Well, my, my thing is, is I'm just not excited when an exotic drops. Then to make a long story short, we saw that except for folks who play Destiny 2 a whole heck of a lot, most weeks, you all weren't earning more than a few Ascendant Shards a week with players who only have a few hours to play, maybe earning one. Armed with that information, we've made two important changes to how exotic focusing is priced. First and foremost, we are eliminating the exotic cipher costs for tier two focusing. Thank God, that's good. Focusing was always meant to be a way for players to put in the work and pick what they want. And the slow rate at which players earn exotic ciphers work against that. Yeah, we were actually focusing Syntheseps the other day and we didn't choose this because of exotic ciphers. We chose the randomize and we got everything but Syntheseps in the randomized version of our gauntlets. Now, secondly, we are reducing ascended alloy costs for both tiers of exotic focusing. Tier 2 focusing will now cost two alloys, so most players will be able to get a few extra targeted rolls for build crafting per week if that's where they choose to spend them. Tier 1 focusing already only costs one alloy. Is it alloys that it costs? I thought it was ascended shards. Tier 1 focusing already costs one alloy, but we heard a lot of feedback that the cost still felt steep. And all the data about materials, we also realized that players don't have enough places to spend enhancement prisms in a meaningful way, so we changed the cost from one alloy to 10 prisms. Okay, they, they had that messed up. Okay, so they meant they meant shards, ascended shards here, guys. I, I have a lot of complaints about alloy, so it's gotta be a typo. On the surface, the price hasn't changed much. 50,000 glimmer, but now for less than it costs to get an alloy, you can get a shard, you can get a semi-targeted exotic roll. In closing, there are the new and lower exotic focusing costs that will be implemented on October 17th, 2023. They're, they're meaning shards here, guys. The difference is golf balls versus basketballs. So just so that everyone is on the same page, this is an ascended shard. This right here looks like a golf ball. This is an ascended alloy. Looks like a basketball. So when you hear people say, I'm farming for golf balls or I'm farming for basketballs, that's the split there. This is a typo because what they're meaning here is not ascended alloys. They're meaning ascended shards. Okay, so golf balls. But tier 1, 30,000 Glimmer, 10 Enhancement Prisms. Tier 2, 60,000 Glimmer, 2 Ascended Shards. Instead of, what was it, 3 before, correct? We were just complaining how in-game doesn't offer enough alloy drops. And it's ridiculous because if there is like the one bottlenecked resource that we have in Destiny right now, it is Ascended Alloys. Now, Deck of Whispers. As players have witnessed, ha, witness, there is a new <laughs> there is a new feature in the Season of the Witch. The Deck of Whispers. Earlier this week, we released a feature story going into more depth and detail around the creation and execution of getting the deck into the game, and then and this and, and the game, and then and then the and then and then and then and then summoning an IRL version of the deck you can own for yourself. 
learning more about how about the hows and whys of this is truly something special. So make sure you take a look at the blog post here. Is anybody checking their shit at the twab? We got a Senate alloys in this motherfucker. And we got and then and then. I'm like Ron Burgundy out here. I will read anything you put in this twab. Mid-season armor and weapons preview. It is time for the mid-season armor and weapons update. And today we are diving deeper into the upcoming changes that you can look forward to in update 7.2.5. Here we go. First up, let's look at some armor changes. Upcoming season 22 exotic armor balance changes. For the season 22 mid-season update, we wanted to adjust two exotic armors that we felt were becoming hard to counter in PvP. Antea's wards. Here we go. Reflect events now requires full class ability to deploy. Following the activation of Reflect Events, your class ability energy is drained proportionally to the amount of damage reflected. It no longer provides an improved slide. Now, Antaeus Wards was granting too large of a benefit for too little of a cost. It also suffered from lack of meaningful counterplay options. Invincibility will do that. By tying the damage reflection to class ability, we hope to reduce the uptime of the effect and to prevent it from easily stacking with Juggernaut Arc Aspect. Antaeus Wards users will have to think about their engagements more carefully because opponents can exploit the times their class ability is on cooldown. I think the question that comes up for me is your class ability energy is drained proportionally to the amount of damage reflected. Okay, so at what point, like if I was sniping a guy and he's sliding with Antaeus Wards and I would have hit him in the head doing a hell of a lot of damage, right? How much of that damage will roll over past the class ability depletion? Or is it still going to tank the whole shot? Is it still going to tank the whole shot? Because if it's still going to tank the whole shot, if there's not going to be a rollover of damage, then yeah, Antaeus won't be as like user-friendly as it is now. But in those moments where you're in 1v1s, when you need it, it's still going to be annoying. I'm under the assumption it's still going to tank the whole shot. We're just yeah, going to have to see out. how it plays out. Now, Young now, Humpar's Young spine Humpar. reduced the trip mine grenade bonus health from 100 to 70 and removed the bonus 50% damage resistance. Grenade energy is now provided on ability kills instead of damage with abilities. I, I know it for PvP, it probably needed to happen. I, I actually feel like this first line right here would have been enough. Like, I feel like that would have been enough and not do the grenade energy is now provided on ability kills instead of damage with abilities. I, I just feel like the first sentence would have been good enough. Now, these changes to Young Homecar's Spine targeted two aspects of the exotic that we felt were causing issues. First, we want to bring its total bonus grenade energy more in line with other solar ability focused exotics like Arthur's Embrace and Caliban's Hand. This change keeps the amount of energy provided large but reduces how easily it can be gained. Second, we wanted to make it easier to counter the enhanced trip mine grenades in PvP by reducing the amount of bonus durability that the exotic provides. The hope is that a well placed trip mine will still offer the hunter an advantage, but a careless one no longer shifts the flow of engagement at all. At all on its own i i think that the main takeaway here guys is you're not going to be able to spam you know you you throw it now it hits it does damage especially like scorch damage and continuing doing the tick damage this is all feeding back into your ability energy and that's why you you can be in situations where you throw back to back trip mine grenades the problem is is you know i we did a video here recently talking about exotics not feeling that exotic you know when you when you keep doing changes such as these i, I feel like you just you kind of drag the uniqueness of those exotics away and that was what was so unique about i mean it really Hopcar's spine locked you into a play style i just feel like this first line reduce trip mine grenade bonus health from 170 and remove the bonus 50 percent damage resist would have been enough now weapon balance and weapon archetypes submachine guns while smgs as a whole have generally been brought into line by the recent changes, we're still finding that many players, especially those on mouse and keyboard, see little downside to sacrificing their stability stat to maximize range. We always want players to have a choice when it comes to which stat they want to prioritize, but those choices should have trade-offs. Until now, ignoring or even reducing stability was not seen as much of a penalty, and the benefits of range far outstrip the downsides, so we are going to make that choice a little bit tough. The goal of this change is not to make SMGs feel hard to control at base. That said, if you choose to sacrifice stability or not invest in it, you will notice the difference in controllability, especially at maximum ranges where greater precision is required. So general, increase recoil globally by 10%. Reduce the mouse and keyboard stability bonus from 20% to 10%. 
I would say after every, I like all the changes, like Bundy has been having an issue with some machine guns and it started, it, it had actually started before Immortal, but Immortal definitely amplified this problem even more. By the way, this increased recoil globally. This is for everybody. That's not just mouse and keyboard, but they're reducing the mouse and keyboard stability bonus from 20% to 10%. All right, moving on. Auto rifles in general. We're happy that auto rifles are seeing more play in PvP, even in higher level lobbies. But we believe the two part buff to range they received in season 22 may have been a bit too much. This is especially true for rapid fire and precision subfamilies, which were already strong. On the other hand, we're still not happy with where adaptive and high impact auto rifles shake out compared to other ARs. So we made some tweaks to separate them a bit. For rapid fire, adaptive, and precision auto rifles, we have reduced their aim down sight, damage fall off scalar stat back down to 1.6, while we have left high impact at 1.7. This should sufficiently differentiate the maximum ranges they are able to achieve and give high impacts room to breathe over precisions, which are currently able to achieve the same ranges without the downside of needing to be more accurate. For adaptive ARs, we weren't happy with how difficult they felt to use, so we've increased their base damage and increased their critical hit multiplier to make them more forgiving, while retaining their current optimal time to kill. Holy hell. Okay, this, this is happening next week, by the way. I'm pretty sure. Rapid fire auto rifles reduce ADS damage follow scalar from 1.7 to 1.6. Adaptive auto rifles reduce ADS damage scalar 1.7 to 1.6, but they increase the base damage 14.25 to 15. They decrease the critical hit multiplier from 1.6 to 1.5 or 5.5. Critical damage is going from 22.8 to 23.3. Now, precision auto rifles reduce the ADS damage follow scalar from 1.7 to 1.6. Now, Amit AR4 specifically. In our final changes to ARs, we are going to be experimenting with the new freedom that separated zoom from damage falloff has given us by moving Ammon AR for zoom value from 17 to 15. In the live game, Ammon is currently the undisputed king of all ARs for multiple reasons. It's high range, the ability to craft it with double enhanced consistency perks, the online origin trait, and it's above average zoom all contribute to the weapon feeling like there is no reason to use anything else. Reducing the zoom will make the weapon easier to use at closer range, whereas stiff competition from SMGs like Immortal and Unending Tempest, but it'll make it harder to use at long range as the accuracy will be decreased and the aim assist will fall off sooner. This will introduce a trade-off to use the weapon and open the door for other ARs to step in and fill the longer range gap. So reduce the, the zoom from 70 to 15. Now keep in mind guys, zoom does not affect range, but it has four benefits. The other three, the, the main benefit that everyone knows of previously preseason the which was zoom increased range right but it doesn't do that anymore but it still helps with all those other things like you know your accuracy your aim assist fall off so what this really means is that at those greater ranges ammon is going to feel more inconsistent now they also mentioned here that because of the lower zoom value the reason why it's supposed to give you a benefit in short range territories against smgs is that there's no shift you know when you're actually aiming down sights there is a shift that's occurring because of your zoom scaler or that zoom modifier. And so the less of that shift in zoom, the easier it is for you to, I guess, visually track your targets, right? I think a lot of people mainly use Ammit for its ability to just consistently snack shots from afar. What I'm more concerned with is the overall range nerf that's gonna be hitting all auto rifles, precisions included. I mean, we just got through playing with Firefright and other autos that feel really, really good. And, and as far as like, the, the conversation around Amit. Dude, I would use other precisions. If I could get a God Row Tiger Spite, Tiger Spite would be the go-to auto rifle for me. I just can't get it. It's just rare as piss. Yeah, a lot of us go to Amit because it's A, readily available, it's craftable, but also some of those other auto rifles are tougher to get. As far as adaptive auto rifles go, we're just going to see how this plays out. You know, things like Hard Light back in the day, I mean, it was the meta. I don't know if this is necessarily going to move it back to that point, but there are some really good, really, really good adaptive auto rifles. We'll have to just see how much that actually moves the needle on them. Pulse rifles. While we're generally satisfied with the place that high impact pulse rifles have found themselves in after the recent round of range changes, it has come at the cost of almost all other pulse rifle subfamilies swinging heavily negative in terms of effectiveness. As such, we'll be making two changes to pulse rifles in the mid-season patch. Our explicit goal is to keep high impact pulse rifles near where they are now. While elevating the other subfamilies to move back into contention, we'll be increasing the damage fallout start at zero range by one meter, which means that pulse rifles with low range stats, that being rapid fires, line weights, and adapters, will all see a noticeable benefit to their damage fallout start distances, while pulse rifles with higher range stats, those over 60, like high impact pulse rifles, will see little to no improvement. 
Combined with the reduction in most auto rifle ranges, we believe this change will allow faster firing, lower range pulse rifles to find some room in the sandbox. Guys, I've been saying it now pretty much all season long. Rapid fire pulse rifles, most notably the, the one from Crotazan over so easy is so good i highly recommend getting that thing at the other end of the spectrum aggressive pulse rifles have been overshadowed by high impacts for almost all of their existence due to needing to land more shots at a higher critical hit ratio plus having a longer burst time and a much slower body shot time to kill we are wary of buffing their damage and entering into another high impact pulse rifle situation but we believe there's some room to improve their comparative range due to their distinctively lower ease of use as such, we have moved their ADS damage follow scaler from 1.7 to 1.8, which will elevate them over high impact pulse rifles in terms of damage fall off distance and give players a reason to take the trade off in terms of lethality and forgiveness. I don't think that has ever happened. Guys, have aggressive, aggressive pulse rifles ever outranged high impacts? I don't know. I don't know if we've ever had that. Like in a one-to-one a, a -to -one comparison, even even the rangefinder roll aggressives could now range like a rangefinder roll high impact. Uh, general increased damage fall off range at zero stat by one meter. Aggressive pulse rifles increase the ADS damage fall off scaler to 1.8. So this is showing the weapon types on the left here. Season 21 base zoom. So where where we were, season 22 ADS damage fall off scaler where we are now, and then season 22 mid season ADS damage fall off scaler where we're gonna be after next week. So you can see how things are changing, most notably auto rifles going back to 1.6, 1.6. Dude, that is going to be a huge, huge nerf. I don't know, guys. So we're going to just see how that plays out. Like, for instance, like, what do you do about weapons like Surus Regime? Wait, Surus Regime? Surus Regime is a 600 round per minute auto rifle. All right, so Surus Regime is going to get a hell of a buff. Okay, yes, it's getting its, okay, it's getting its range nerfed, but it's about to get a hell of a buff. Okay, but anyways, everything else is getting pretty much shit on uh the rest of our other auto rifles all right um this also shows you that ads damage fall off start distances zero to 100 stats you got season 21 base range season 22 base range and then season 22 mid-season base range okay keep in mind hold on hold on auto rifle base is going from 1.6 to 1.6 but keep in mind 17.2 meters is still going to be the floor is is dropping and the ceilings are dropping but it's still the ceiling is still substantially better than the ceiling in season 21 all right that's good i was under the impression that our ceiling was going back down to this area to that 33 meter area okay i, th I don't think it's going to be as severe looking at that i, I don't think it's going to be as severe guys okay, nothing else is here changing outside of look we got pulse rifle aggressives 27 to 41 uh ceiling going up to 28 can you believe that the the, the floor actually dropped in season 22 so this is a big jump the, the floor here is actually going to jump up even more than what it was in season or pre-season 22. But the ceiling is also jumping up to 42.3. So all around, this is a this is a net buff over what pulse rifles were doing previously. Now, fusion rifles. Some combinations of perks and damage boosts can allow fusion rifles to operate well outside their intended ranges. Plus, in general, fusion rifles feel like they can reach out just a bit too much. So we've reduced a minimum damage after minimum damage after fall off from 50% to 45%. This means their damage fall off will occur more quickly once it starts and will decrease to a lower value than it does does currently in life, which would help to reduce the instances of feeling like you are mapped well outside of expected ranges. So general reduce the minimum damage that fusion rifles can deal after damage fall off from 50% to 45%. Uh, sniper rifles. The changes to sniper rifles are twofold. First, we wanted to address the issue that sniper rifles even with modern investment in airborne effectiveness, still don't feel usable in the air. We increased their base airborne accuracy by 20%, which now has them starting at the same accuracy that they had with an Icarus mod pre-AE. Further investment in AE will still provide increased accuracy and aim assist. On the other hand, snipers have been bordering on becoming oppressive in high-level gameplay. And part of that is they deal such high damage that even landing a body shot can push a player to critical health. This felt wrong. As the intent of the sniper rifle is to be a high risk, high reward weapon and have them be so rewarding for missing a headshot, didn't feel like it fit the amount of upside they can provide in the hands of a skilled player. As a result, we've decreased the amount of body shot damage that sniper rifles can do as a starting point and we'll evaluate how this change plays out in the wild moving forward. Note, this change also affects their body shot damage in PvE, but in season 23, 
we will be buffing sniper rifle PVE damage by a flat 15%, which will more than offset this decrease and increase the precision damage against all targets. Whisper meta, right? So general, decrease the airborne accuracy penalty by 20%. Sniper rifles are now as accurate at base as they were pre-AE with an Icarus mod. Aggressive sniper rifles, decrease body shot damage from 157 to 135. That's a hell of a drop. Increase critical hit multiplier from 3 to 3.5. Adapt to sniper rifles. Decrease body shot damage from 131 to 119. Increase critical hit multiplier from 2.95 to 3.25. Rapid fire sniper rifles. Decrease. By, by the way, I, I want to mention here about adapt to snipers. With this increase there and from 2.95 to 3.25, something like a beloved, we'll get the one crit kill on a super. And even I, I'm trying to remember what the damage resist rates were. I think that's I think that's a one hit one shot crit on a super at 52% damage resist. It should be able to one tap supers, guys. I I don't know. We'll have to go there and actually like take a look at it. But that means adaptives uh, on even like the the higher resilience supers should be able to one tap. Now rapid fire sniper rifles decrease body shot damage from 90 to 85. Increase critical hit multiplier from 3.25 to 3.45. You can't even get the two the two tap body shot with rapid fire sniper rifles, so I'm surprised Bundy's like nerfed it again. Now shotguns like snipers, we wanted to make shotguns with the minimum AE investment feel more usable, so we have matched the base in air accuracy of slug shotguns to what they were at pre AE with an Icarus mod. Pellet shotguns are in a bit of a unique situation, as pre AE they had a substantial accuracy penalty, which would deflect the entire pellet spread, which at the time was also random. We have since removed that entirely and replaced it with an increase to spread angle so that the effect of jumping on the weapon's behavior would be more predictable and can be displayed in the hipfire reticle. As it stands currently, their actual accuracy is the same as it is on the ground and cannot be improved. But to be fair to them, we have decreased the pellet spread penalty by 20%. So general, decrease the airborne accuracy penalty for precision slug shotguns by 20%. Slug shotguns are now as accurate at base as they were pre-AE with the Nicarus mod. Decrease the airborne pellet spread penalty for pellet shotguns by 20%. So the main takeaway on things like this, like notice slug shotguns are now as accurate at base as they were pre-AE with the Nicarus mod. But before you couldn't put Icarus on things like Chaperone. What this really means is that you should be able to land your pellet shots uh, or your precision slug shots with something like Chaperone with even more accuracy pre-AE in theory. In theory. Now perks, perfect floats. Don't, don't. I've gotten so, so many rolls I've, I've deleted because of perfect float. Perfect float has strong benefits, but the duration was too short for something that just improves stats and requires extended combat. Increase base duration from six to now ten seconds. Increase extended duration from seven to twelve seconds. Guys, seeing what you see here, would you be willing to use perfect float now? I don't know. I may. Try, I think I'm gonna try it. I think I'm gonna try it now. You know, I may try it in its, in its current form right now and just see how it plays out next week. I mean, what if it's secretly meta? What, what what if it's like the best perk in the game and we just we've just completely overlooked it? All right, Kickstart. Kickstart is one of the most popular damage perks on fusion rifles, and it allows them to have both a substantial damage buff and faster charge time without a difficult activation cost. So we've reduced the damage bonus provided by the perk, reduced damage bonus from 20% to now 15%. I think it's still going to be really good. It's not even just the damage bonus, but the, the charge, right? The, the, the quick charge, the, the quick release of your fusion that makes it so good. So I think it's still going to be a, a very good trait to use. Now, checkmate. We will also have some minor tuning coming for checkmate control, including increasing the score to win from 100 to 125 and decreasing the frequency of heavy ammo spawns from 90s to now 180 seconds. Now, future stuff. In Season 23, we will have a host of PV tuning changes. We don't want to share too many specifics because some things still have the possibility of shifting during testing. But we can give you this sneak peek. Increased base PV damage for glaive projectiles and sniper rifles. Increased damage against minor combatants for pulse rifles and honor rifles. Greatly increased damage against champions for Revision Zero and Vex Mythic class. Dude, don't give me hope, Bungie. Don't. I can see Vex being good, but don't give me hope. I have, I have, we have reviewed Revision Zero like five times after literally every single rework. And it still came back shy, dude. It needs to be a heck of a buff. But notice it's just against champions. Uh, we're also excited to finally get the Glaive rework into your hands, including some changes we've made to the exotic class Glaives to make them more effective and enjoyable to use. Have any thoughts about what we shared so far? Be sure to hit us up over on Twitter X at, at Destiny2Team and our feedback form right here.
Guys, that's pretty much it. Other than that, there's a lot of uh, archive cutscenes. Uh, if you have not seen these cutscenes, maybe you just want to just get up to date on, on some stuff. Although I, I would imagine some of you may be pretty confused even after seeing these cutscenes, but it gives you some context. And then as far as the Crotus Inn emblem, Crotus Inn 48 hour challenge mode emblem. We are continuing to work on sending the Crotus Inn challenge mode emblem and acknowledging the all for one triumph for eligible players. As a reminder, to qualify for the emblem of triumph, Players must have completed the Crotus Inn raid and the Crotus Inn challenge mode within 48 hours of the raid release. We checked ours ourselves. We still don't have it. I know this past week, the patch note said that this has been fixed. Not quite. Outside of that, other known issues, guys. Continue to investigate ongoing reports of error codes and destiny. Hive source will occasionally consume a player's enlightenment but fail to be picked up and Crotus reprised. And then Photonic Vest is currently unable to be transmogged. All right, fellas. That is Thy Twab this week. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.